Oh, at long last. <laughs> can't come cruising with me today. Mummy's got to check the oil. Because I'm doing locks, you're not allowed to come. So I'm actually trying to do my engine checks and little Bonnie, she's so loving. She doesn't leave me alone. I can't even have a shower without her. If I'm having a shower, she's poking a little face with the shower curtain. You little perfect thing, aren't you? <laughs> right, let's get her started. You're not coming, baby, so come in here. Come on. Good girl. In you go. So as we've got loads of locks to do today, I thought I'd use my new toy. So before we set up, I just thought I'd show you this Lockmaster windlass in a bit more detail. It's hard to show it on locks, I will do when I can, but when there's people queuing or waiting at locks, I can't be there with my camera faffing about. So basically, it's brilliant, it goes into different positions, you just pull this thing and then you can flop it around whichever way you want it, so it can go that way or straight or... But anyway, and it locks into place, it takes a second. And then you've got the normal lock, you've got the normal position, which is that position, so where it's locked like a normal windlass, or you just grab these two little nipples and, and that's it, and it goes into the ratchet. So when you find yourself with a stiff one, then you just put it in ratchet position. But the little bit I've used it so far, I'm loving it. So thanks, Jeff, for sending me this. Anyway, hopefully I'll get lots of use out of it today. You're all right, Bonnie. You're going to be all right. I'm only doing a few locks. It won't be long, I promise. So today's adventure is we're heading to Atherston. Now there's 11 locks there, but I'm hoping to just do half of them, get myself moored up if there's space and go and explore the town. Oh, so I really miss having little Bonnie outside with me because she loves being outside watching the world go by. Now I'm a bit lonely now because she's not here with me. I've got no one to talk to. Well, I've got you guys. You got, I've got you guys to talk to, haven't I? But yeah, I often get asked though, um, do I get lonely living on my own on a boat? And to be honest, not really because I keep myself very busy. In the daytime, I'm either cruising, exploring, working, and then in the evenings, I edit these videos. Yeah, so I don't get a chance, but I do try to surround myself with really lovely, positive people. I really miss it at the moment, Melissa and Chico and John, because I've loved cruising with them for the past couple of months. And Melissa, every single day when you saw her, she had this beaming smile. She was always happy, giggling and laughing. Such a lovely, positive person to be around. And that makes it for me, you know, having people in your life that lift you up rather than people in your life that put you down or bring you down is very important. I love seeing all the different quirky boats on the canals. So some of these are people's leisure weekend boats, some of them are people's homes, but I love the eclectic mix of all the different types of boats. So the first lock of the day. So remember, the purpose of locks is to enable your boat to navigate up and down hills. And there's 11 locks here at Atherston, although today I'll probably only do half of those. But the complete flight here at Atherston actually raises your boat 36 feet and six inches. Yeah, it's quite big that, isn't it? Big in. Just whilst I'm faffing with me ropes, can I just give a big shout out to Patrick O'Neill and Polly Sue for becoming supporters of the channel via Patreon. Thank you so much. So 
that's the first one down and luckily a gentleman that was coming up from behind and um, he shut the gates for me but yeah it's warm today and I've got my hat on and the only reason I've got my hat on is because my hair's a bloody mess I'm desperate to get it cut I really am oh. So this is my second lock of the day and luckily there was a lovely couple here waiting to come down in their boat and they did the lock for me. Fantastic. The nice thing about the Atherston lock flight is some of the locks are quite spread out so if you've had enough for the day you can just moor up and you don't have to bother tackling the whole lock flight in one go. As you can see here in the distance there I'm holding my centre rope and never put it round the bollards. I probably would do if it was a wide lock but on these single locks I just have the rope close to hand so if the boat does start going backwards I can quickly grab it. I've got two more to do now before I'm more up and I'm already though covered in lockages. But it's nice meeting other boats on the way because they've helped me finish myself off. Ooh. The reason that locks take a lot longer when you're single-handed is not doing the lock itself, it's the setting of them. You've got no one to go off ahead and set the lock. So you have to moor your boat up, go and get the lock ready, then you have to walk all the way back to your boat, set off, go into the lock. So it's always great when a boat's just coming out of a lock and you can go straight in. Bloody hell, I almost got myself pregnant on that chimney then. There's nothing elegant about boating, especially as a single-hander, because you're normally covered in engine oil, mud from the towpath, lock jizz, spider poo, <laughs> everything. And especially for me at the moment, because my hair looks like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. If, that'd be lovely. That'd be absolutely lovely. Thank you. So this lovely gentleman has offered to do the lock for me today now Woohoo! and this is last lock of the day so that's fantastic so this is lock six so i'm actually halfway up the flight as well which is great but i'm going to moor in this pound straight after this lock so i can go and explore the town
Are you ready to go on an adventure? Yeah, she's going to explore Atherston. Come on. Yay! Oh, she's so gorgeous. Are you ready to go, eh? Have a nice adventure. Nice walk round. Yeah. Oh, she's a good girl. Been a good girl, haven't you, baby? Come on. So I'm here at the stone. I absolutely love having dead bolts on my boat now, them proper locks. It makes me feel a little bit more secure, especially now that I'm moored in a town. I have been to Atherston before, but it was quite a long time ago. It was before lockdown. So yeah, we're just gonna have a little mooch up here now, me and little Bonnie, and uh, see how far from the town we actually are. So as most of you know, okay. Bonnie's my little rescue dog. She's absolutely Girl. gorgeous, but she's a Girl, bugger Bonnie. with other dogs. And I've been doing lots of training Girl. with her using positive reinforcement. And this today, Good going Girl. through all Girl, these dogs Bonnie. was a massive breakthrough. Good girl, Bonnie. Oh, she's been very good. She was an absolute bugger later on, but you've got to take these wins when you can. So this is Atherston. And how gorgeous is this place? What I love best about it is, is most of the shops are all down one street, both sides of the street. And then you've also got this lovely little square here. And it's a little bit like Europe. Everyone's sat out on chairs and tables. It's beautiful. So not only is Atherston a gorgeous, quirky little town, but it's famous for its ball game. And this happens on Shrove Tuesday every year and dates back to the year 1199, where two nearby counties, Warwickshire and Leicestershire, fought on the streets of Atherston for a big ball, which back then was a bag of gold. It still happens to this day and all the shops get boarded up because it can get quite rough. But these days it's just played for a massive, huge ball. Don't be rude. I'm loving these little old fashioned cobbled streets. Beautiful. So I'm looking now for hairdressers because I'm actually on a 48 hour mooring. That's the thing with towns, you see, you're, you're always on a 48 hour mooring two day mooring. So it's trying to find somewhere I can get my hair cut quick. So I tried everywhere and then I went to this amazing little salon and they said they'd fit me in. So get my hair cut at long last, woohoo! She might yeah. not pay for the bugger when she's had it done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, it's much easier to fiddle with now. <laughs> Easy on the boat. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was so made up that that salon squeezed me in there. They've done a fantastic job. Anyway, it's back to the boat, but first we're going to get ourselves some fish and chips. Look at that. Woohoo! So, I've had my hair cut. I've had it cut really short because I wanted to because you don't understand how difficult it is living on a boat without a hairdryer to do your hair. And because my hair is really thick, it just ends up with a big bouffant on the top. So we asked him to go really, really short, which was great now. That lasts me another three months. So I've just had some lovely fish and chips. Not as nice as Melissa and John's fish and chips cooked on the towpath, double dip chips. But lovely for a chippy, so highly recommended. Yeah, so that's my hair done now. And uh, yeah, it's rum time. So as most of you know, I make all my own music for my YouTube videos and that's for various reasons. One, it gets me being creative and I enjoy doing it. And the other reason is so I don't have to pay to use music, which most people do. They pay to a company such as Epidemic Sounds. I think it's about £120 a year. Or you can use royalty free music, but then everyone's using the same music. So I wanted to be a little bit different and make my own. And I'm going to sort of show you now a little bit of the process about how I make the music. I was using GarageBand for ages because it's free. It's on an iPad and it's on a Mac. So you can just get a little MIDI keyboard, connect it up. And I've recently progressed from GarageBand to a software package called Reason because it's full of synthesizers. The thing is, I love making my own sounds. So it's not even about the music for me. It's about sound creation or I take an existing sound and manipulate it. And that's the thing I enjoy. So I'll show you a little bit about that now. So for example here, I've just got a basic piano sound. I 
and then I use all these synthesizers to manipulate and change that sound so it's something that I like. So before I even make a song, I end up getting a few sounds together that I've created or manipulated and then I go from there. So I've got this nice string sound that I've been playing with. I'll show you that one. So for example, for my string sound, I've gone from quite a harsh string sound like this. With a bit of manipulation and knob twiddling, I've got something more like this. So, so yeah, so just by playing with the, the attack and the, all the little knobby things, you can create your own sounds and that's the best thing I love. So let's make a tune. Once I've recorded that into the computer, I can move to a different sound and I'm working my strings now. And I apologise, I haven't got any proper speakers. I normally do all this with headphones on. <laughs> so I'm just, just coming through my little MacBook speakers here at the moment. <laughs> so I hope you can hear it. So it's going dark now, but yeah, that's basically how I make a piece of music and it takes me forever. Lots of people were saying, Heidi, have you got any new tracks in the pipeline? Well, it takes me so long in between, because I'm doing everything on my own, remember? I'm cruising, I'm editing videos, I'm still working, and then doing my boaty jobs, going to the supermarket, going to the post office every day. So I hardly get any free time, but when I do get that time, I do enjoy sitting down and being creative. So what I'm gonna do is in the next video, we're gonna be taking it up the Ashby. <laughs> so what I'm gonna try, and as I'm on the Ashby, try and add to this tune as much as I can and hopefully get it finished in the next few weeks. But as I'm adding to it, I'll show you, see what you think, um, and hopefully we'll complete it together. <laughs> yeah, but all my music is on Bandcamp. I have took all my music off the streaming services now, like Spotify, Amazon, and that. It just wasn't worth it for me, so it's now all on Bandcamp. And the good thing about Bandcamp is you can go on there and listen for free. You can also download the music, pay to download it, and I get much more of a cut on there than I do on Amazon and stuff. So yeah, so it's gonna be on there. So anyway, it's rum time and time to take you in the rear entrance. So we're gonna have a classic. We're gonna have some Captain Morgan Spice Gold. Yeah, I have this one with a mixer. So let's just tip that in there. And just whilst I'm pouring this, a big shout out to all those that bought me a coffee this week. Thank you very much, it really does help. And we're going to mix that Captain Morgan's with some Tango Paradise Punch. Woohoo! Look at that. Yeah. Lovely. Ah, oh, so we're now in the rear entrance. And uh, yeah, this is actually my second rum because when I'd poured that last one, my mum phoned. So I drank that on the phone to my mum. So I had to pour another. Yeah, so I'm one step ahead of you today. So cheers. Yeah, just a little tit of rum. Woo! Mmm. Oh, that's really nice that. It's dead, uh, dead fruity, fruity. Right, so I love coming in the rear entrance. Rude. Because <laughs> I love this bit where we talk to each other and I've got two little ditties today, which I'm really excited about. And I'm just so, so glad. Last week, I got so many ditties sent in. It was absolutely fantastic. And I have saved them all and I'll use them as we go along. But if you do want to send a ditty in, please do. It, I love them. I love this bit. Now, the end of a video, we have a little chat, have a drink. Love it. 
Anyway, the first ditty is referring to the stern gland last week that I filled in and it's from Peter. And it goes a little something like this. Heidi needs to twist her knob to make the dripping surely stop. One day the twisting did not go. There was no grease. Oh lordy, no. She checked her gland, the whole back set. An empty lot would get a back end wet. She quickly filled her tube to the top so she can now merrily twist her knob. Yeah, you make sure you do that every time you've had a cruise. Now the next one I thought was relevant because I passed these guys when I was doing the Atherston flight and they were in a rush because they had something that they needed to get fixed and they had to be somewhere. And it was Debbie and Roger on narrowboat ripple effect. Ripple with an R. And they sent me this. So let me just get another little drink. Just wet the lips. Dry, dry mouth. Cheers. Woohoo. Mmm. Right. And it goes something like this. We called a cheery hi to Heidi as we went cruising by. A cheery Heidi hi came back in reply, which raised our spirits to carry on to tackle the flight at Atherston. We couldn't stop for a chat and a tipple as we had busted a part on Ripple. <laughs> bless you that's fantastic so i'm going to leave the video here if you have enjoyed it please do give me a big thumbs up it really helps subscribe down below keep leaving those comments i absolutely really do enjoy reading them sometimes i'm not straight on them because i've got no internet or i'm cruising but please i do try to reply to every single one anyway so please take care stay safe and before i go just a massive shout out to my patrons who help me every single week and I just couldn't make these videos without them. So that's it. So take care, guys. <laughs>